So I got a couple other tools I wanted to show you because again, talking about finding and looking for hardware on your machine, a lot of times when hardware changes or when hardware is failing, like has errors or whatever, you're going to see messages displayed. Uh, they would be displayed on the console of your machine if you had a console. In, in the case of a virtual machine, you might have a virtual console. Uh, but in the case of a physical machine, you might have to connect a monitor to it. That's not exactly convenient, but there are ways to see what's on the console or see what's been logged uh, on this system, even if you're remote. And one of those is D-Message, D-M-E-S-G. And there may be nuance here, but as, as far as I've seen in my experience, generally what's displayed on the console, like errors that show up on the console, will also end up in D-Message. D-Message, here we go. We can see that this is things that happen early in the boot sequence will end up in D-Message, and things that happen to change the hardware will end up in D-Message. This is like a lower level system log than var log messages or the journal, the system journal are. Right. So another place that you can look if you're connecting new devices and you don't know where they went or whatever is D message. All right. And along those lines, we still have the good old var log messages, which you might say, but that's been replaced by the system journal. In some cases, yes. In some cases, no. Var log messages still exists and it shows some of that data. You can see there, we're going to go through a demo of this later, but you can see there I, I attached a SCSI or I attached a USB stick to this in testing, and it shows up in var log messages. It was also in D message, right? So it's in both places. Some things are there, some things are in D message, some things are in the system journal, which is the last thing I wanted to show you. So actually, Nate, anything that goes to D message also goes to var log messages because the syslog rules make it. There are things I have found early in the boot process that do not end up in messages. Oh, because you're not yet running our syslog, and so hasn't received them. So not everything. <laughs> Most things. How's that? Most things. So uh, there you go. All right. But dmessage is, is a handy tool, and it's easier to type, right, versus cat var log messages, right? So I'm going to stick with my dmessage, Scott. And it's color-coded. I will. dmessage is the kernel message ring, and there's a finite size of memory that's used to store it. Yes. Just yes. like you said that uh, you lost early messages for syslog. If enough activities happen on this machine, you'll start to lose those early messages out of D message as well. Yes, that is also true. So yes, var log messages for persistent stuff. All right, so that last thing was journal control, right? There are command line switches to journal control, which make this easier to read. But for the purposes of just the quick critical path here, I'm just going to show you journal control. You can see there's a bunch of data in journal control. It's paginated. It's got a pager, right, that lets you scroll up and down. And don't forget to scroll left and right if you see a very long message. There are flags that'll make that wrap, uh, but I didn't use any of them today. But if you can't find it in var log messages and you can't find it in D message, it could be in the system journal. Commonly, the system journal is things that come out of system D. So services starting and stopping, the actual process of starting up systemd, that'll all, all end up in the system journal. There are system logs that also end up in the system journal sometimes, but that comes down to like how things are filtered and redirected as things are running and whatnot. And uh, yeah, there you have it. That's my critical path for today. You got any comments on that, Scott? Anything I missed? I've already made them. You've already made them. All right, cool. So now is the time, of course, where we take questions from our audience, or if you're a deferred viewer, please feel free to leave a comment. Uh, both Nate and I are pretty good about responding to those if we see them. Nate, we're going to be talking about a whole bunch more commands. Yeah. And, I and see like I said, in Critical Path, like this is one of those things that once you know how to find hardware, it's like you've uncovered a mask, right? Like the veil is lifted. Now, all of a sudden, it's so much easier to deal with things in Linux because you know where to find the data that you need. We did get a question from Shantanu. Okay. Wouldn't journal control be the way to get early D message messages since boot param, since boot is a parameter of journal control? I would have to actually go look and see what see if see what the differences are between D messages and, and journal CTL. I would think boot messages that happen before system D has started might get missed and would be in D message, but not in the system journal. Do you know different, Scott? So I know that as part of the boot process, at least for our syslog, it actually grabs a copy of the D message and sends it to our syslog. I wouldn't be surprised if the same thing happens with 
journal. D message is still easier to type than journal CTO. So I'm sticking yeah. with it. No, D message is an older tool is really what it comes down to. And like a lot of things, as the operating system progresses and as things get improved, the old tools stay because people are so used to them, like people like me that are used to the old tools. <laughs> but there could be two or three ways to get the same data out of a machine. Oh, and Nate, I just noticed we're wearing the same shirt today. Yeah, I just noticed that as well. So if one of us just goes like this, it doesn't look so bad. It was All the right. next one in the stack when I was looking for a shirt today. All right. So do we want to get into some of our or device specific commands? Yeah. So let me get my share back up here. All right. There's a couple other really handy tools. And we've talked about some of these in the past on this show and on some other shows. I remember Eric and I did like your top five favorite Linux commands. And I covered some of these because I think they are that helpful. That was like maybe a year ago at this point. But LS USB. So say you've connected a new USB device and you're not sure where it is, or say you just want to see what USB devices are connected to a machine. Now, obviously a USB device being connected is generally a physical act, like you have to be present with the server, but there are cases where maybe you're remote. Maybe there's, maybe you had someone in your data center plug in a USB stick for you and you're like, okay, now where is it? Did they plug it in? Is it there yet? That kind of thing. So we already showed you dmessage and how when you connect a disk, a, a new SCSI or a new USB device, it'll show up in various system logs. One of those is dmessage. I like dmessage. We've covered that already. But you can see right here, while we were talking, I mapped a new USB bus device to, and you can see right here, it says that there's a new device. SDA is where it got mapped to. It tells me things like that it's a SCSI disk. It tells me things like how big the disk is handy stuff. If you mapped a new drive that's a SCSI device, or if you mapped a new drive that's a virtual disk device, it'll also show up in this log, right? Again, D message, var log messages, and probably the system journal, since we've covered all three of those at this point. But that isn't all. What I really wanted to show you was a cool utility called LSUSB. What this does is it asks the system to show me everything that's connected to the USB bus right? I don't care if it's a disk device or a virtual serial port or I don't know, whatever, that radio that I talked about. If we do LSUSB, it'll say, hey, here's everything that's on the USB bus, including the root hub, right? So it'll tell you how many root hubs I've got, what version they are, right? See, this is a USB 3 root hub. This is a USB 2 root hub. And then right here is my QEM USB hard drive. That's the thing that I connected, right? And if we were to look at dev... SDA star, we're going to see, look, there's dev SDA. So now I could go say, make a partition on dev SDA, map that to a place on my, my, my system. If there's already a partition on there, and I don't know what tool supports this, but if there's already a partition on there, it'll automatically mount it inside of, uh, where is it? Is it var run media still? We've moved this a few times. Oh, that's um, a function of the graphical desktop environment. There we go. And I can't remember which utility is it, it is in GNOME that will perform that automatic mount. Right. It doesn't but happen. It's super running in. Okay, it doesn't mount. happen when you're on a server like this. So you'll have to find the thing and map it. But if you are on a desktop environment, it'll find it for you and mount it, which is actually super handy because that's what you expect on a desktop environment. All right, so there's a couple other tools that we can talk about here in the same vein. Just like LSUSB, there's an LSPCI, right? So say you're trying to figure out where your video card is. You're in like one of those quagmires where you're like, why doesn't my NVIDIA card work on my laptop? I need to know what kind of card it is so I know what driver to go download. LSPCI will show you everything that's connected to the PCI bus. And things like a video adapter will show up in this list. So you can see here, I've got PCI root ports and uh, here, Intel Corporation interface controller. What is this? Oh, here's my, I think this is the video card, the virtual video card that's attached via KVM. I think that's SM bus controller, right? I'm going like deeper here than I need to. The point is anything that's on the PCI bus should show up in LSPCI. Again, handy if you're trying to figure out like, where's that video adapter I'm trying to set up? There's another cool, or another tool that's good for listing SCSI devices, LS SCSI. Are you detecting a trend here? Listing SCSI devices. You can see here, there's that CD-ROM that we looked at inside of dev earlier. And of course, because that USB device is technically a SCSI device, or it maps it as a SCSI device, it is there in dev SDA, right? So there's my USB disk. 
Again, any SCSI devices that you have connected to the machine should show up in here. Any local SCSI devices. Go ahead. Yeah, this is really handy if you're dealing with maybe in your company, you have another team that does storage mapping mm -hmm. and you've added map you storage and you're trying to figure out where it is or what it is. If you grab an LS SCSI beforehand and then they're like, it's done, you can LS SCSI afterwards and see if it shows is connected to your machine. And then you'll also be told what device idea was assigned when it's connected to your machine. Handy. Will this will this cover things like iSCSI devices and fiber channel connected disks? So fiber channel, yes. I've never tried it with iSCSI connected devices. I could totally go off the rails because my home lab uses an iSCSI device, but let's not do that. <laughs> all right. So yeah, LS SCSI. There's another great tool for listing all the block devices connected to your system, and that's LSB. I like this one because it gives you a nice tree of like where the block devices are, what partitions they have. And in this case, it even shows me that I've got LVM volumes within VDA4, right? Even shows you where they're mounted. Really handy stuff. So again, using my my that CD-ROM drive here as an example, there it is. My USB disk that I connected, there that is, right? So LSBLK for listing block devices. And Nate, throwing it back for a second, I had never seen this before, but Andre said LSPCI-K shows the kernel driver loaded for the different devices. That's handy. Usually I would have just gone to LS mod to try to see what, what was there, but this is actually really nice. Thank you for that. See, you learn something new every day on into the terminal, Scott. Even we do. That's right. <laughs> All right. And let's see. Actually, that's the end of my list, Scott. Any other questions or comments before we move on? No, I don't think so. I think we're going to move to some more commands that look at kind of general hardware attached to the machine.